Steve, you all right? Excuse me. All right. I'm going to get that uh, team, my team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Mascots, mascots here. We have the Gander and the Patriots and the Sterling Rangers. Great. To see you, great. Thank you for going and, and uh, pepping us up as we go. We start our Save the City. So let's give them a great big hand for participating today. <laughs> Tracy Wheeler will sign your, your pass so you can go back to school and make sure everybody's fine. But we do appreciate you coming. So thank you once again. Thank you to the mascots here in Baytown. <laughs> thank you, Gander. All right. See you. Yes. Keep winning. All right, well, what an exciting day. I want to spend with you to tell you what is happening in Baytown. And so with that, how about the video? It was an awesome video that we just saw. As you can see, we're all pepped up. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. I want to move this here first, if I can, because we are moving the chains in Baytown. And so, let's move the chains together today. Let's move the chains together today. I'd like to introduce you uh, uh, to some of the elected officials. I think that was already done, but I, in particular, the mayors, Mayor McWilliams and, and Mayor uh, uh, Kelton from uh, Helton from Laporte. I want to thank you for being here. Uh, you understand what it takes to put on a save the city. You understand. Okay. That's okay. But you know how, how, how it is to run a city, to, to run a council meeting. And so I do want to thank you for your participation today, taking the time to come and hear what's happening in Baytown. So what a beautiful place we hear once again, the High Regency Baytown. So let's give it up for all the staff, all the wait staff. You were introduced to a lot of the special guests and elected officials. So I do thank you for, for being here and certainly joining us today and to Tracy Wheeler, Ricky Wheeler, and all the chamber staff for once again uh, working with our public affairs to ensure that we have a great stay of the city. Uh, and my council members, uh, I know for the ones that are here, uh, thank you for being here, some that they just couldn't be with us today, but I'm very fortunate to serve with a great council. Together we can uh, progress our city, together we can move the chains for everyone here in Baytown. So thank you once again to our city council. So if you haven't been to one of my, thank you, if you haven't been to one of my State of the Cities before, because uh, I know a lot of you, you're going to be on your phones anyway, so we want to incorporate a little bit of that, and we're going to get you warmed up, so get your phones out. And so we're, before I get into the meat of my speech, uh, we have some fun, some fun questions for you, just kind of warm you up, just like we do before a game, we're going to warm up. Uh, so there's a QR code up here, you can scan that code. Scan the code quickly. Anybody need more time? So what, here's the question. I don't think that's the one. Try it again. There we go. So it's a very simple one. So here we're in Texas, it's a beautiful morning that we just had, feels a lot better outside. Uh, and so a simple question, so uh, Texas chili, beans or no beans? Beans or no beans? And so we'll have live data. So it's beans. It's with beans, without beans, and then no chili at all. I don't know who those folks are, but the police chief is here. We may escort them out a little later. So it looks like with beans is in the lead. Wow. Surprising. So move on to our next, we're calling brain busters. How about pizza? So here the question will be, so what is the worst pizza topping? And I think we give you two choices, pineapple or anchovies. I'm sure there's many more. But if you had to have one not on your, on your pizza, which one would it be? I think we can all agree on anchovies. 
no doubt. And the last one for our warm up, peanut butter. Creamy or crunchy? Creamy or crunchy peanut butter. This one's a little close. Creamy is edging it out as far as crunchy. So, okay, you'll have other opportunities for your phone, so don't get them too far away from you. Uh, but we have a lot to be proud of in Baytown, and I want to tell you a little bit about those things today. Uh, so, so exciting things are certainly happening, and we'd like to announce as much as we can today. And I promise when you leave here today, you will certainly know a little bit more about what's happening in Baytown, and you'll certainly be excited for our future. So I do want to talk quickly about Hurricane Merrill. Uh, obviously, we experienced that in July, and many of us escaped uh, major damage, uh, while others did uh, also have to make some repairs, and some are still trying to recover from the storm. But one thing remains the same. We are here for you as a city, and we are all in this together. Every time we have a storm, I'm, I'm so proud of uh, all the departments and the community that we come together in order to take care of one another. I uh, also want to take some time to... Uh, thank the City of Baytown employees, particularly our debris crews. Uh, they were out and about along with some contractors. Uh, there was lots of debris to pick up and they continued to, they continued to work uh, as much as they could to, to try to go and remove uh, that debris material and other materials from your yards or, or your, your place of business. So we do want to thank you for that or thank them for that. And certainly our first responders, I know you've seen uh, are some of our police and fire uh, and EMS personnel here. So we want to thank them for their service during the storm, keeping us safe, uh, and, and ensuring that uh, our streets were safe during, um, during those hours of the storm. And thank you also everyone who's volunteered uh, in the recovery, if it's through your church or any community organization. We want to thank you for helping out with that. And particularly we want to thank State Senator Carol Alvarado, Harris County Precinct Commissioner Adrian Garcia, Judge Lucia Bates, the Houston Food Bank, Walmart, and others. Uh, some, I know some of our council members all joined us, and we were just able to go and feed uh, individuals and provide them some essential needs for our residents. So I do want to thank uh, that effort. Uh, and certainly uh, we want to be sensitive to those that are still recovering, but I think it is safe to say that the storm, although it was a Category 1, could have been a lot worse. And so our thoughts are, are still with those who are recovering. Uh, also, just, uh, just not long ago, Hurricane uh, Helene, Category 4 st storm uh, did make landfall in Florida and went up the East Coast. And so I think you've seen a lot of the damage uh, and loss of life and injuries that, were, that took place on the East Coast. So our thoughts were those individuals. And as we speak now, we have another hurricane in the Gulf, Hurricane Milton. Uh, it looks to be a very strong hurricane. It's going to impact the West Coast of uh, uh, Florida, particularly the Tampa Bay area. And so uh, those individuals are certainly in our prayers as certainly it seems like uh, a very, very bad storm is imminent in the Florida area, and so we just we hope for the best with no loss of life. And so continue to pray for, for those individuals uh, in Florida uh, and the East Coast. So one, more, one other a quick brain buster with Hurricane Barrel, uh, and no cheating uh, if you know the answer, uh, at least the city staff. So during the storm debris collection efforts, we collected more than 165,000 cubic yards of debris. So how many football fields, I think you kind of understand the theme we're going with uh, to say the city, but how many football fields would that fill? And I think you have a few multiple choice. So 165,000 cubic yards. A lot of input. Let's see. Pretty close, but the correct answer is 25 football fields. So 25 football fields uh, of debris, that's a lot of debris uh, that had to get collected and then processed through a lot of the federal, um, uh, I guess, requirements that we, we all had to experience with, uh, with that to make sure that it's, it, it's processed and, um, I guess, removed uh, within those guidelines. Uh, as I said, uh, Hurricane Burrow was a Category 1 storm, but... Uh, by the measurement of debris and, and other damages, it was, it was what tip, typically comes as a Category 3 storm. So that's the, the amount of damage that we saw uh, with Hurricane Barrel. So I'd, I'd like to go back real quick, if I may, and uh, once again thank our uh, first responders. Our police chief is in the back, uh, Chief John Stringer, uh, and also you, you heard um, uh, mention that uh, Chief uh, Kenny Dobson was not able to join us, but uh, again, just thank, thank them, all the officers, all the firemen that 
uh, did uh, keep us um, safe and was able to treat anything, but luckily uh, we didn't have any injuries here in our city. Uh, and also f last week, uh, our police fire EMS also with Greedo Fest and our national night out that took place last week and ensuring that we go and get to know our neighbors and uh, moving forward with um, making sure that we keep Baytown safe. And I know the police chief, uh, he said that um, it is their goal as a department that we're gonna make Baytown the safest city per capita in Harris County. And I believe the numbers do support that. And I certainly support all the efforts of chief and his staff with making a safer Baytown. And the numbers do support that. And I think we'll get there, chief. And so with that, um, we just wanna say thank you. And let's get to uh, a few other things. I always like to start off with, uh, I guess you say the budget and, and some finance uh, in particular. So it's an important time to be mayor of Baytown and myself and council and staff, we are continuing to explore opportunities that will truly uh, continue to move the chains for Baytown. We remain focused on taking care of our infrastructure for our citizens and the other needs while being fiscally and financially responsible. There are several projects that will be announced today or, update, or updated today to show that we are moving the chains in Baytown. So while the city remains strong financially, increase, as, as you know as business, as a business community that, that is here today, increase in cost with major infrastructure projects, water services, and workforce has caused the leadership team to look at some of our best practices. And so about a year ago, our city manager, Jason Reynolds, and our finance team discovered some of the previous um, some of the, I guess, pre uh, previous practices, uh, when you look in some out years, it was not going to be something that was sustainable. So they went and they, they came up with a plan. They, they uh, went through a process uh, that we can go and have a sustainable future. And so uh, with those efforts, we started realigning a lot of our priorities, both from the staff, from a council, so that we do have that sustainable future. But our work was not over uh, this, past year, uh, this past budget. Uh, we remain proactive uh, in ensuring that we can reduce the budget in order to meet a sustainable future, uh, but also making sure that we do not impact our citizens and the service delivery of our services uh, with the least amount of impact. And so this budget, uh, once again, uh, obviously just not just a balanced budget. I think a few of the numbers is $138 million uh, revenue budget. Uh, also with our expenditures uh, in this budget is $142 million and operating costs is 136 million. Uh, what this number doesn't include is the funds that transfer from year to year. Uh, we do not operate in a deficit budget in any way, but this, those funds and those projects move from year to year. And so uh, we had uh, continued to see increase uh, cost, obviously, in our staff and personnel and raw water that we do receive from the city of Houston. And, but our, again, our priority remains on public safety and infrastructure, so we wanted to ensure that this budget, in particular, made sure that all our services continued to be uh, without interruption and the same uh, level that our citizens expect. I'm particularly proud of what we did with our tax rate. Um, it's been a difficult and challenging budget, um, but I can tell you in the past six years, uh, when I became mayor, I think we were in the 0 .83, 0 .82, uh, tax rate and every year as mayor that tax rate has been reduced uh, and particularly we also reduce the uh, homestead exemption uh, for our 65 plus and disabled uh, in 2020 it was a 50,000 exemption we were we have been able to, uh, to work with uh, the resources that are provided by our taxpayers to build that exemption up to 120,000 and so the whole idea is that our 65 plus community uh, age group taxpayer, um, you will pay zero taxes uh, based off of the average median home, home price in Baytown. The idea is that you have done your time and you, you would pay zero taxes with the exemption and, uh, and I hope that we can see future exemptions uh, for, and tax relief for our citizens. Uh, and so this tax rate, I'm, I'm, again, we were able to lower it two cents. Uh, I would call it some brandonomics and I'm very proud of these brandonomics because the past six years, we've lowered your tax rate. And so that's what I call being physically responsible. That's what I call about delivering services, delivering uh, physically responsible government to all our citizens. So uh, I have no problem taking on that term, that term if it's lowering your taxes and, and tr being truly a, an advocate for tax relief 
then count me in, and I hopefully I can count you in too. So a lot of you from industry, I do want to thank you for being here, uh, for taking the time to listen to the few things that I have to say about what's happening uh, in our city. Uh, Baytown is uniquely uh, positioned uh, for growth, and we want all our partners that are looking to expand or, or people who are coming to Baytown to let you know that Baytown is open for business. Uh, if it's oil and gas, logistics, whatever the case may be, Baytown is certainly a great place for any business uh, to grow and, and really flourish. Uh, ExxonMobil, which is home of the third largest refinery in the U.S., uh, operated uh, right here. The Baytown complex itself is the largest integrated and most uh, advanced petroleum and petrochemical complex in the world. Uh, it produces uh, or refines 584 barrels a day of crude oil. Uh, the chemical plant itself has a ca capacity to produce 9 billion pounds of petrochemical products each year and the Olefins plant produces over 10 billion pounds of primary petrochemicals. In addition to that, ExxonMobil recently finished a $2 billion expansion, $2 billion expansion, uh, and certainly there's plans uh, for more in the future, particularly the Blue Hydrogen Project in Baytown. It's coming to Baytown. It's great. It'll be a great job creation. I know some of the numbers that I've been told could be up to 4,000 new jobs because of the project and throughout, and I can tell you as mayor and certainly uh, on, on, with our council and our staff, all right, keeping individuals employed is certainly something that we all benefit from. And so uh, we wish ExxonMobil the very best on the Blue Hydrogen Project. Uh, we also have our Chevron Phillips Chemical uh, Facility here, which is the Cedar Bayou plant, which is the company's largest domestic manufacturing facility. Uh, it also has expanded its, its uh, propylene business this last year and its expected capacity of 1 billion pounds per year of production. It has uh, nearly 1,000 direct employees and 2,000 contractors on site. Covestro, uh, which is uh, this site here in Baytown, is the largest operational facility for Covestro in North and South America, and is the third largest production site with more than 1,000 employees and several hundred contractors on site. And then we get to our midstream sector uh, within Baytown's ETJ, which is enterprise products and, and others uh, that uh, are able to go and produce here with uh, the market that is, is available. And then we have some of the support products that, that support oil and gas with pipe products. Uh, I think you, you mentioned Borison. There's also Teneris, JSW Steel, and Jindal Steel. So we do, we do thank each one of you. And then we always call this, uh, and some of the mayors may, may know this term um, from the Economic Alliance itself and because of our, of our proximity and partnership with uh, the Port of Houston, but this is the make it and move, move it uh, region, certainly in the world, and so logistics and distribution with TGS uh, partners here uh, in, in our Chambers County area. Uh, it's home to, to substantial logistics and the, the uh, distrib distribution center. Uh, they're able to, to manage products uh, for the area, certainly for the Port of Houston, and it's the largest man, uh, master plan rail and barge uh, industrial park in the United States. So we do thank them uh, for everything that they do. There's products that go in and out, and they continue to, to see more and more interest from around the world. And so we continue wanting to work with them uh, to ensure that they are successful, that our area in Baytown is successful, and, and we, we do thank them for their efforts and certainly for being here today. So here's our next brain buster. So as the city expands, so does the need for more amenities. So it's participation time once again. So this is going to be a word cloud. So what retail store would you like to see come to Baytown? What retail store would you like to see to come to Baytown? I think one is standing out pretty good. I'll give it a few more seconds. So hopefully somebody takes a snapshot of that so we have it so that we can certainly uh, let one, you know that we're listening to you and let developers know uh, and hopefully they're listening to what are the things that we are looking. But as you know, um, it's always the question all around town is what about the mall, right? So that brings us to the hottest topic, certainly uh, in the past uh, few days, is uh, Baytown Tennessee Marketplace. 
So I know that uh, we have lots of fond, fond memories of the old San Jacinto Mall, but the focus now is shifting to the San Jacinto Marketplace. So as you know, Fidelis uh, Partners, that company that owns the mall itself, we, they did host a groundbreaking just last week. Uh, it is real, right? It is not just something that is staged. They are complete control of the entire uh, 105 acres. They, they um, got control about uh, 20 and 2022 20, is when they got full control uh, after some, some acquisitions. Uh, and so with COVID and some other things that certainly slowed down what we would like to see as a groundbreaking, it did take place. It's going to happen. Uh, they have a lot of great, um, I think, uh, renderings, I guess, of what it's going to look like. I think it's going to kind of have a coastal seaside type of look. Uh, and we are certainly excited for them. Uh, as I said last week, is day one of San Francisco Marketplace. Uh, but I do believe it is a renaissance in the Baytown retail market. Uh, it will certainly go and be a project that we can all be excited about. We should all be excited about. Uh, and that for myself and council and staff, uh, we are incentivizing and we have incentivized Fidelis to bring us the best quality retail, dining, and entertainment. Uh, if they do that and they perform well, they will be rewarded. Um, and so with that, we will move forward with the San Jose Marketplace. It's important to recognize that this has been a huge undertaking and that we, we, uh, we will see uh, I guess the remainder of the year, some dirt work and a lot of ground prep work that will take place with the removal of the old infrastructure and then I guess preparation for the new infrastructure uh, there at San Jacinto Marketplace. Uh, so with that, um, I will tell you, um, it's hard. I would love to tell you the names of what's coming. Uh, I begged, I pleaded, but they just won't let me do that. Uh, but I'm told the ink is not quite yet dried on a lot of the contracts that have signed for those that are coming to the marketplace but that Fidelis will be announcing some, some of those names as soon as possible. The one thing they did let us know that there is at least going to be 15 food establishments and our restaurants that will be part of this project. And so uh, we would have lots of new food choices here in Baytown. Uh, and so with that, um, we're very excited about that. And we truly believe that this will be a catalyst uh, for our city. Uh, it's long overdue. And if you're like me, I'm tired to, of driving outside of our city limits to spend my money, to buy clothing, furniture, whatever the case may be. And that's why I really do believe this, this will be a great genesis for a lot of new retail development here uh, once again back in Baytown. So brain buster number six, since we had just mentioned about restaurants. So what are some of the food and beverage options you would like to see in Baytown? So what are some of the food and beverage op options you would like to see in Baytown? I love all the entries. I don't think there's a bad one up there. But if you'd like to continue to uh, input that, um, I think that's great. That's a, a great uh, information, obviously, for developers or anybody who's looking to bring a food uh, establishment to Baytown. So we'll move on. So we have a lot of new, um, new updates on a few things that, that are either coming or in process uh, to open here in Baytown, in particularly Longhorn Steakhouse. Is coming, is coming along pretty nicely. I think they will be opening, uh, expected to open uh, very soon. And we also seen uh, some new development along Alexander Drive with the new Taco Bell. Uh, and we are also aware, as many of you are, uh, that HEB and Starbucks have plans to build off of Highway 146 uh, there near I-10. And a Dutch Brothers just opened up off of 146. And then the groundwork, I believe, I've seen the other day, Bojangles and a Best Stop Cajun Market are in the process of building their locations here in Baytown as well. What we've heard, we've also heard that Swig Soda Shop is expected to put a location on Garth Road. So with that, uh, we believe that, that certainly retail, restaurants, and so on uh, is, um, is going to happen in Baytown, and a lot of new restaurants that we haven't uh, experienced before, haven't seen before, are well on their way here. So next is I'm going to shift to Project Vector. So if you're, if you're not familiar with the term Project Vector, it's a, a working title of what will be a multi-purpose 
uh, venue that would uh, entertain youth indoor sports and particularly volleyball and basketball. Uh, but it, it, Project Vector would be even uh, bigger than that in some cases. But what I do want to tell you about Project Vector as it develops is what does Baytown, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and the Houston Texans have in common? And that is the Harris County Sports and Convention Corporation. They're over here at this table over here with Ryan Walsh and his staff. So we do want to welcome uh, them here to our state of the city, but certainly as we continue to build a partnership with the Harris County Sports uh, and Convention Center Corporation, uh, we, we are very excited. Certainly they have the expertise of this pinnacle project. It w we believe it will redefine our community. Uh, and so as we collaborate with them and their team of exports, experts in the sports and entertainment industry, uh, this caliber of project uh, we believe will be unmatched in the area and we have uh, one shot to get this correct. And so with their expertise, uh, we believe that this will be a facility uh, that will not just host, um, in a sense, local events, it will be regional events, uh, and that it will be a, a uh, entertainment district, obviously with, uh, with a lot of the youth sports, but particularly a youth, uh, excuse me, an indoor arena uh, with, with kind of, uh, I guess you'd say, a capacity for maybe three to 5,000 individuals to go and host camp championship uh, tournaments. And so we're very excited with that as those announcements continue with Project Vector. I think the next phase at this point is that you will, we'll see more uh, community engagement and citizen engagement, uh, getting a lot of the stakeholders around in the design of this facility as it unfolds. And so uh, with that, we do, we do wanna say a site has been identified not publicly, but it has been identified. And so I believe there'll be some announcements in the very near future on Project Vector, its location, and what it will bring to our citizens. Next, we also wanna talk about one of our newest amenities is the golf course. Uh, it, it opened about a year ago, and uh, it is operated by Troon Golf. And Troon Golf, if you're not familiar with them, they are the number one uh, golf uh, operator, golf course operator in the country. Uh, they operate many, many courses, very beautiful courses, uh, resort courses, and particularly uh, La Contera Resort in San Antonio. I think they also have the Rawls uh, course in, at Texas Tech, amongst many, many other golf courses. Uh, and we're just very proud of, of how this project has developed uh, as far as the maturing of the greens. Uh, it is innovative, it's certainly an innovative course. Uh, the past few weeks I've heard many, many great things from our citizens on National Night Out and others about this course and how um, uh, they believe how fortunate we are to, to have golf once again in Baytown. Uh, and particularly the, the uh, food and beverage will be, uh, it's under construction and it looks like it will open a little bit later this month or early November. Uh, so you can golf and certainly enjoy at the clubhouse uh, the new food and beverage that will be taking place. So I certainly invite you to play, play the course, experience it uh, here at, uh, at the course. But the announcement we want to make is this, and this is the first time that, that this is public, uh, is the, the Tabs Bay Golf Course is what this is. So Tabs Bay Golf Course there at, in the Evergreen area. So come out and play, it looks beautiful. So now let's talk again about the Hyatt Regency and the convention center that we have here. Uh, so we would do, I do want to thank uh, the general manager here, Alex Dantes. I'm not sure where you're at, Alex. Oh, there you go, Alex. So Alex and Ramon and all the staff here, I mean, they are exceptional. If you come here, if it's for lunch or a staycation, whatever the case may be, they certainly, uh, they know hospitality and they certainly uh, are able to go and make sure that you are very comfortable here uh, at the Hyatt uh, Regency and Convention Center. Uh, th this hotel itself, it was in our 2015 citizen survey is where the hotel was in a sense, uh, I guess, um, revisited. And so uh, it was uh, a comment, it was the only facility that was mentioned by name in that citizen survey. And now we are here and we're enjoying it after a year of opening its doors. Uh, it continues to, to host major events. And particularly just the past uh, few weeks, uh, I believe uh, Houston Methodist Baytown, uh, they had a facility here on a Thursday. The Friday after that, or the next day, which was Friday, was the Lee College Gala. It was great. It was a, the whole place was uh, filled with uh, a lot of folks enjoying and, and raising money for the Lee College Foundation. Uh, the next day after that was the Service League that hosted an event here. 
And then just last Thursday was the Texas uh, Chemical Council, and that's where all the chemical uh, and uh, chemical producing manufacturers in the state, they all came here uh, and joined, and I'm told that there was a lot of great remarks from all those that participated. And again, they're like, we can't believe that there's a high regency here in Baytown, Texas. And I think it's great, it's a great amenity, and so uh, it continues to, to uh, host uh, new um, conventions and, and new events, and so things are looking up. Uh, and we certainly uh, will say that, I think, I believe, we knew that a few years were gonna be uh, a little challenging, uh, but already we are seeing that this budget year, uh, based off the highest budget they submitted to council, uh, they, their operational revenue, or their revenue will exceed operational costs, and that's what was expected. And so we continue to, to go and uh, support them. I hope that you will do the same. It is a beautiful hotel. Uh, in fact, besides the beauty of the hotel, I think they really captured a lot of the ambiance of the kind of the industrial area that we have. But in particularly one thing that I'm sure they're proud of, I'm sure, I know I'm proud of, is that, that the Baytown Hyatt Regency ranks number one in cleanliness out of all the Hyatt hotels. And so everybody likes a clean hotel, but even in this beautiful hotel, knowing that in that chain, a very, very um, prestigious chain of, of hotels, this is the number, this right here, by, by its customers, is ranked number one in cleanliness and number five in overall customer service. So we, again, we are very fortunate for this hotel. And so we think that that, along with another best kept secret, which is the Anchor and Hearth restaurant just outside these doors. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, uh, try to come and have lunch here uh, at the restaurant. Ch uh, Chef Joaquin uh, always has a great menu. Everything tastes great, uh, certainly with a wood fire grill and so on. Uh, Baytown residents, you get a 10% discount for the remainder of the year if you come out to uh, uh, Anchor and Hearth restaurant. So I certainly invite you to do the same. With Hurricane Barrel, uh, there was some damage to the hotel. Many of those repairs are being uh, either made or being completed, certainly as, as I speak. Uh, and so, uh, but it, mainly because of the 100 mile per hour winds, uh, but a lot of that will be uh, completed here very shortly. Uh, and with that, we are certainly moving the chains in multiple ways, including the way we attract businesses. And a lot of you are here from the business community. Uh, since this is, this is certainly a, a chamber event, uh, what do we do to attract business to Baytown? And so we, we conducted an image study that was re released last year. Uh, and in that, in the, in that study, uh, what we found was, the results of it was, there was two things, economic development and talent, uh, talent att um, att attracting uh, talent to Baytown. And so I'm happy to announce uh, two new initiatives. One, the first one on economic develop development is the Baytown Ford. So Baytown Ford is about attracting economic development and that's the effort that will be um, conducted through that program. And then Baytown Life. So that is the city, Baytown Life is the city's uh, resource to keep, attract, and invite residents to Baytown. And the site would target talent interested in moving to Baytown while providing them with a wealth of information on factors like jobs, cost of living, and housing. In addition to all these economic development efforts, the city is re-imaging a grant that would provide significant uh, seed money to businesses or events looking to come to Baytown. So more to come on that particular uh, uh, program. So now I also want to, real quick, uh, what major activity, so get your phones out again. So what major activity that, that is not being done by Baytown, by the city or anyone else in any other way, what major activity would you like to see in Baytown? So this will be another word cloud. Interesting, some really good responses. I will move on while you do that. I'm gonna move on as we grow, or, cer or certainly our community grows, the need for housing, better quality housing is, is certainly one that is in front of us. 
And so last year there was, uh, in the city limits, or the past 12 months, there was 156 new housing permits that were issued within the city limits of Baytown and 438 new housing permits listed just outside the city but within our ETJ. So as Baytown continues to grow, obviously the housing market continues to flourish. Uh, and so we're certainly, are certainly excited to see all the new neighborhoods. Uh, in fact, we're growing uh, where, if you didn't know it, uh, you see some helmets here that represent some of the high schools that joined us today. But Baytown's footprint itself is, is not only within the Goose Creek um, School District, but also Barbers Hill ISD and Deer Park ISD uh, have residents from Baytown that attend one of those districts. Um, each of those districts are very strong in academics and athletics, uh, but that just shows uh, how, how we continue to grow in the service footprint of Baytown. And also we have Lee College, so we're very proud of Lee College. There was a few firsts for them, if I may real quick. So this is the third consecutive year of record enrollment. Uh, we're 50 students away at Lee College of hitting 9,000 uh, here in this semester. Uh, Mount Bellevue Branch will open. Uh, I think that was the citizens approved uh, and voted to approve a new center of Lee College. So that will be coming uh, to Mount Bellevue. So we're, we're excited to see as the campus of Lee College continues to grow. And additionally, the, du the dual credit college classes for high school students, uh, which will include free tuition, no fees, and free textbooks for Lee College. So with that, to say Lee College uh, continues to grow, and we're very fortunate to have them as an asset uh, and a resource here in our community to develop a workforce, and certainly the knowledge and skills that are needed for the Baytown area. I'm gonna quickly look at the public safety building. This here is uh, a $73.8 million project that will house our police and fire administration. It's a beautiful building so that, that they can uh, do the police operations and fire administration. And it is a great, um, beautiful building uh, and that'll allow them really the needed space. They've been cramped up in the old uh, facility for far too long. And this here will allow our law enforcement officers uh, the, the ability to go and, and make up safe for Baytown. In addition to that, the courthouse will also see a few improvements that will take place, uh, and those improvements should be completed by early 2025. Uh, so Garth Road, I will touch. So besides San Jacinto Marketplace, uh, we will see Garth Road continue to be widened uh, from I-10. The first phase of construction will take place from I-10 to uh, just south of Archer Road, which is the widening itself. And then later on, it will, the next phase would be to Baker Road. Uh, which will include some widening, and then as Baker Road, uh, Garth Road from Baker Road to 146, because the right of way is not there, uh, we'll, but it will see some enhancements along Garth Road. Certainly, it's our major commercial corridor. Uh, this is a $200 million project with 80% of your federal tax dollars funding it, uh, and that is in partnership with TxDOT and the Houston Galveston Area Council. So, with that infrastructure, so I know Councilwoman Alvarado, it's been way long since the Market Street Corridor um, project itself uh, began years ago, but it certainly looks that uh, they will be going out to bid here very shortly, and that will be a, uh, an improvement from uh, pretty much where Market Street originates near Exxon Mobil, uh, and will go to basically toward uh, Lee College uh, along Market Street, uh, and they will add mobility, sidewalks, bike trails, and medians and there will be four roundabouts along the way. Uh, and so we, we think this is a great partnership with uh, Commissioner Garcia and Precinct 2 uh, to match funds. And so uh, the county put in the majority of the money and then we also uh, are putting in obviously for this improvement uh, for our city. A few other projects I'll touch on is uh, some of the residential streets, um, Fairway, Savelle, uh, you can see the improvements in these long overdue neighborhood streets. I love fixing streets. Council loves fixing streets. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like shellcrete, I can tell you that, but uh, a lot of these streets and residential streets are, are long overdue, and it's glad to see them to completion, uh, particularly Narcell, Narcell Street. I drove that a few weeks ago, and it was, just, it was great for the neighborhood uh, to have some of these sidewalks and new concrete. And so I'd also mention uh, on West, the West Texas Avenue drainage, and I believe also uh, our neighborhood of Bay Oaks Harbor, some long overdue new streets in their neighborhood. And so all in all, the city has about 50 active projects that are taking place, which is about $144 million of projects taken, taken uh, are being addressed this year. You can follow all these projects if you go to our new dashboard at baytown.org slash 1202. Also, I want to mention that 
our Gene and Loretta Russell Park, just off Wallaceville, in the northern area of our city. You can see it's a green space, but we just met with uh, Commissioner Tom Ramsey, uh, and we are uh, in development of designing, uh, I believe it's gonna be a five field hardball baseball complex. Unfortunately, Mr. Russell passed this past July, uh, but his estate and the executor we are meeting, and so we will see select ball uh, and baseball uh, at some new fields here in Baytown. We believe that, that we want competition level and that the market, along with Project Vector and the indoor sports, we believe that Baytown will certainly become more and more a sports tourism uh, community. And so I'm very excited to see that. Also want to do a little bit of bragging on our city itself and all the, the various departments, although they receive lots of recognitions. And particularly, there's a few that I would like to um, highlight. Uh, the first one is our fire department EMS. They won an, the National EMS Award from the American Heart Association just recently. Our planning department received the Planning Excellence Award from the American, yep. I was very impressed. I, don't, I, I know we're we getting short on time, but uh, I, I had the opportunity recently to go and be in an EMS, not as a patient, but just as, as a, I guess you say, visitor. And it's just remarkable what they can do in the back of an ambulance. Uh, they can give you a 12 point EKG and many, many other things. Uh, the service level capability that we have in Baytown is something that I'm certainly proud of. Our planning uh, department received a planning excellence award from the American Planning Association. Our finance department received for the 31st consecutive year an excellence in financial reporting. And our public works team has received additional uh, many awards, but in particular our assistant director Kevin Harville was recently recognized for a technical innovation award from the American Public Works Association. And of course our Parks and, and Rec, who has received many, many awards throughout the years, continues to win awards, and particularly the, in 2024 it was, it was awarded Water Park of the Year. And we just wanted to say Pirates Bay is doing great, and it certainly see that it is recognized um, uh, for our Parks and Rec and certainly the Water Park itself. And then we have our award-winning July 4th, Juneteenth, and other events that takes place here in Baytown. And our Parks and Rec is led by our director, Cliff Hatch, which was, was also recently named the, East, the Texas East Region Parks and Re Recreation Director of the Year. So congratulations to Director Hatch. And then we have our public affairs, who I want to thank Thomas, Jason, and Ryan of Public Affairs for this event and everything they do throughout the year. Uh, they have produced a, an award-winning Baytown Voice magazine, and it's, it just won uh, also an, addition, an, an award. Uh, I think it came in is it first in the country for the magazine itself. And at your places here, you will see that is a brand new edition. It's not hit the public yet of the, uh, I'll call it the fall winter uh, edition of the Baytown Voice magazine and our citizens should expect that in their mailboxes by the end of the week. So addition, additionally to that, in communication is our uh, council members and our staff. So we did participate, or hopefully some of you dis did participate in the listening tour that took place uh, across the city. I think there was, each council district hosted the city manager, Jason Reynolds, uh, and then in addition to that, it was a follow-up with our police chief uh, just to talk about a safer Baytown. And so, uh, they, they continue to do that outreach and meeting with our citizens and collecting a lot of that information and concerns. And so I, I do appreciate each council member that participated in that. I think tonight in District 6 at the Roseland Park Pavilion at 630, uh, Council Member Lester and others will be there uh, as part of the listening tour. And quickly, I will talk about the fatherhood initiative. So a year ago, we did talk about the importance of uh, fathers and father figures in our community. Uh, it, is, it is so helpful when there is a father figure in anyone's family. And so if you look at uh, an assessment online that we have online, it shows that uh, when there's drugs and alcohol, incarceration, or poverty, child abuse, and many other factors, when they contribute uh, to fathers not being involved in their children's lives, that there are certainly outcomes in our community that we don't want. And particularly from 20, in 2016 to 2021 in Harris County alone, there was, there was the drug overdose increased by 68%. And many of those, if you look at the data, it is, it is because a lack of a father figure in many of these individuals. So this is why this is so important. It's a great initiative um, that we have going on in the city. And certainly we, we look at it as it becomes implemented as we find a partner uh, that identifies or partner agency that will identify to lead us in these efforts. 
Uh, also, Citizen City Communication Organization is committed to getting the word out uh, to the public as much as possible. Uh, we want a transparent Baytown, and we certainly work for that every day. And we do more than most cities in communicating uh, through magazines and various means. But uh, our, our communication, you're getting communicated through written print, mailbox, social media, whatever the case may be. Uh, we want to make sure that you have all the information uh, from, our, from, our, from our city and our public affairs team is committed to making sure that you have that. A very trusted source. So in closing, so I want to make sure that we're all on the same page of moving the chains and building a better Baytown. So this is what I have uh, for you. So last year I, I did talk about ambassadors. Uh, are you a Baytown ambassador, right? Because every single person in here, you're here for a reason. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that we appreciate you buying a ticket and listening to a little bit what's happening in Baytown. But you're here for a reason. You have a vested interest in Baytown, just like everybody else that's sitting around here in this room. So I think on your table, you see some puzzle pieces. Right. And you may have wondered, like, what are these pieces? Like, why are we supposed to put these together? What's the case? So I'll tell you, it's quite simple. Right. I've expressed as quickly as I can all the things that are happening in Baytown. And it takes a big effort from many, many folks. Industry, the city, small business, everything has to come together, right? So you're a piece of the puzzle. You individually, it may be your company, it may be Lee College, it may be whatever, but you are a piece of the puzzle, right? And a piece of the puzzle doesn't do anything, right? It's the bigger picture that we're all interested in. And that could be whatever the case may be. It could be a golf course. It could be a hotel. It could be a uh, sports, uh, youth sports venue. It could be a new mall. Whatever the case may be, we are all part of Baytown, one way or another. And to be successful, we can't just hold on to our piece. We got to take that piece of the puzzle, you, right? And we're saying, together, we're going to move the chains. Together, you've seen some football legends talk about it takes teamwork, but don't give up. I haven't given up in Baytown. I know that Baytown has a very, very bright, bright future. I'm working hard every day. Our council's working hard every day. Our staff is working hard every day to move the change. So that piece of the puzzle is you. And you can go and take a positive approach to moving the change. You can go and say, although we have challenges, I'm going to be part of this uh, moving the change Right, whatever it may be, whatever your place may be, we're all pieces of the puzzle, right? You ever you, you see when we're trying to move the ball, if it's a first down or if it's a touchdown, all the teams comes together and they're all pushing, they're pushing that football forward, right, so that we can be successful. And that's what I would ask of you. The takeaway I ask from you is take your piece of the puzzle and ask yourself, what am I doing to move the chains for my business, for my family? and for my community here in Baytown. So with that, I will tell you, God bless you. We live in the greatest country in the world. Uh, we, you know, Texas is the greatest state in the world to go and have a business. Uh, you can see a lot of the individual partners here that are, that are just flourishing and expanding, expanding. But in Baytown, in the Baytown region, along with my other mayor partners here, we live in the best place. If we want to go and move the chains, if we want to go and put the effort and have a positive approach where everybody can benefit, we can't ask for a better place to go and live, work, and play. So with that, I tell you safe travels, God bless, and thank you for being here today, and thank you, Tracy, and, and the Chamber and Public Affairs and staff for allowing me to be your mayor, and I will tell you I will continue to work every day to go and move the chains for Baytown. With that, let's come together. Let's come together and move the chains.